Hey guys, it's me Vivs here from SlideNerd. Last time I showed you how to have a floating action button with a menu. In this video, we are going to customize the floating action button to have the right icons, the background and make those button clicks work with the help of the click listeners out there. And we'll find out how to sort movies by name, date and ratings. Let's get started. So in the first step, I would like to change the icon of our floating action button because the current launcher icon looks pretty shitty. So I have the right icon for it. It's called action underscore new, which is the plus sign that you guys have been seeing all along. So I'm going to add that icon here and I'm also going to set a background drawable or a color on that floating action button. That can be done with the help of the selector file that I have made where I have two different drawables. One when the button is pressed, other when the button is in normal state. So if you take a look at these icons, they're nothing great. There's our button action red underscore touch and then there's our button action underscore red. So I'm going to use this as the drawable for our floating action button by simply saying dot set background drawable. Here I will pass that by saying r dot drawable dot selector button underscore red. At this point if I run the app let's take a look at what happens. A lot better, won't you agree? Now if you go to our fragment movie search, here is our floating action button with the three little icons. Again, I need to change the icons for these as well and maybe set a different color on each of them because these icons are pretty indistinguishable from the background white that we have in our app. At this point, I have changed the color of our floating action button to match our accent color defined in colors.xml. When you click the button now, you have the sub actions with the proper icons within them. Not only that, when you click on one of the sub actions, the background is darkened as you can see here. And that's done with the help of a selector. Here's my selector which is called selector sub button underscore gray dot xml. When the button is pressed, it's gonna trigger one icon. And under normal state, it's gonna trigger another icon. And both the icons look like this. This dark version and then there's the light version out here. If you do this in code, you simply go to your main activity where you had your sub action button dot builder. Here you set a background drawable where I have passed the selector button gray as you can notice. And that's all you need to do to do the sorting. The next step comes in handling the clicks. Let's see how we do that. There are multiple ways to handle the click event from these buttons. One is to have an individual on click listener on all these buttons. And the second is to have a common one. Let's follow the common approach. Here at the top in our activity, we simply implement the on click listener. Ensure that you press Alt Enter to override or implement the methods that are needed. Click OK. And now we have our on click method here at the bottom. Now all we need to do is go here to our sub action buttons and simply say that this activity is going to handle the on click for us by simply passing the this argument for all the three buttons out here. Now we need a way of identifying which button was clicked inside our onClick method. We have not stored any instance variables containing these button actions that we have defined. And we won't do that either because it's not necessary. Rather what we are going to use is either IDs or tags. Now you're welcome to use one of these. I'm going to use tags in this case. I've made three tags at the top for tag sort name, tag sort date and tag sort ratings. I'll simply use these tags by setting them here to our buttons by saying button sort name dot set tag and I'll say tag sort name over here. So there you go. The three tags have been set perfectly. So now if I go to our on click method, all I have to do is check which tag was actually triggered. So I can do that by using an if else condition here by saying we get tag and if that is tag sort name, that means our tag sort name button was clicked. So just to show you that this tagging mechanism is working, let's put a toast and find out if this is really successful or not. So I will use the l.t class and method static method to make our toast here, passing the context and the message that we have. So sort name, sort date and sort ratings. Let's find out if this works. So there's our app and if you open the button right now, you click on date, it says sort ratings was clicked over there. Click on the next one, sort date. Click on the third one, sort name, and that means it's working perfectly. But does it work for all fragments? Yes, it's going to work anywhere when you click on that. The proper event is going to be triggered. But our job is to now propagate this event to the right fragment so that we can handle it. Let's see how we do this. There are several ways you can do this, and I would like to know which way you think is the best. 
first way is to have a library like event bus or auto in your code. From the main activity, you simply trigger the event and inside your fragment, you catch that event. It's as simple as that if you take a look at their documentation. Second way is the hard way and that would mean taking a reference of our adapter that is our view pager adapter in our case which we can simply say is view pager sorry adapter dot get item now with this adapter dot get item method we could get a reference now beware now view pager adapter in our case extends the fragment state pager adapter if it's a fragment pager adapter you won't face any problems but if it's a fragment state pager adapter not all fragments are instantiated at a given time only some of the fragments are active, the others are in a destroyed or saved state. On Stack Overflow, this fragment state pager adapter is a whole topic of discussion. People have different solutions. The most complex ones involve taking the source code of the fragment state pager adapter, adding it directly inside your app and modifying it to have an array that contains the tags or IDs for each fragment and stores them by overriding the instantiate item and destroy item. I'm not going to get into such specific solutions in this video. The first thing that I'm going to do is make an interface which we can simply do by going to X class by saying new class and make the type of this class as interface. Call this as sort listener. Inside this interface, I plan to add three methods for our three sorting mechanisms. I'll simply say public void on sort by name, on sort by date, and on sort by rating. The next thing that I plan to do is ensure that all our fragments implement this interface. That would include the fragment box office, the search, and fragment upcoming. So let's go here in the top of the fragment and simply say implements sort listener. Implement the methods. Click OK. And there we have our three methods over here. Same for fragment search, let me repeat it. So here I have the methods implemented everywhere in all the three fragments. Now I'll go back to our main activity and what I'll simply do is say adapter.getItem. Here I'll simply pass the current position of our view pager. I'll simply say view pager.getCurrentItem and this is going to give me a reference to a fragment here. Now you know very well that all our fragments implement that interface. So here we first check if the fragment is an instance of sort listener, if yes, then we simply say fragment dot on sort by name whenever we have the tag sort name being triggered here. So in that case, I have added toast message inside all the fragments. Since box office and the on sort by name, I have the toast search and our fragment upcoming. Let's see what happens when we run this. So there you go. There's our app running. At this point, I expand this and I say sort my name and our app crashes. You're like, whoa, what happened? You take a look again with the lollipop device again. You select A to Z, the app crashes. And if you go down to the log cat, you will notice it says null pointer exception. And where is that null pointer exception? It's inside our fragment search in line 61. Let's take a look at that. Go to fragment search here. Inside line 61, the only possible explanation that you get is the get activity is null. In other words, the on sort by name method is called before the activity has been fully linked with our fragment, thereby giving us this null pointer exception. So let's try something else. We can go here and say adapter dot instantiate item. We can pass our view pager here, and we can pass the current position that is selected inside our view pager by saying view pager dot get current item. Now in this case, it says incompatible types found required something found something else just type cast it by pressing alt enter and cast it over there now what happens when we run our app let's take a look at this so you go here now select this and you say a to z it says sort name search go to the second tab you select that again and you say a to z it says sort name box office repeat that here sort name upcoming go back here type that rotate the screen type that no matter how brutal you go about this it perfectly works so what is the difference between get item and instantiate item? Why did I use instantiate item and the app didn't crash? How come get activity was not null in the fragment search in this method when I called instantiate item? Time for a nice debate, eh? So you guys let me know in the comments why the first method crashed and why did the second one work? So let's get back to on sort by name and figure out how we can sort our results. For the next part, you can do the actual sorting in several ways. You can have the code right inside on sort by name, or you can have it inside your adapter, which contains your array list of movie objects. 
or you can have a separate class like movie sorter where you have separate methods that do different types of sorting this is the approach which are they following if you're wondering whether i'm going to use merge sort or fix sort or radix sort i'm not going to do any of that java apis already have a lot of pre-built sorting methods for example you can go to collections class and say collections dot sort here and you need to just pass your array list inside and you're done in our case we need to use the second type of sort method which has two arguments the first argument is the movies the object or the array list that we want to sort second would be a comparator a comparator is simply going to help us decide how to sort it for example if you say new comparator you notice very well that there is a method inside that interface called compare over here it gives you a movie on the lhs and a movie on the rhs and it tells you now you decide how you want to compare this if you go to our movie class there are a lot of instance variables here about title release date audience score in our case the one thing that we are interested in is title we want to make sure that the titles are sorted alphabetically so going back to the movie sorter what i'm going to simply do is go here and say return lhs dot get title which is a string i'll simply call the compare to method here by saying compare to and i'll say rhs dot get title that's all i need to do if you go to the documentation for the java comparator and take a look at this method called compare you will notice that it gives only an integer that either contains minus one or zero or one and the idea is very simple a negative integer is returned if the first argument is less than the second argument a zero when both are same and a positive when the first one is greater than the second one and by default the java strings have this comparison ability which is why i have set compare two over here which is going to return minus one if the first string comes before the second one and equal or zero if both of them are same and then it's going to return positive one if the first string comes after the second one now let's try to use this method and see if the comparator actually works all we got to do is go to our fragment box office now and we need to make an object of this movie sorter at the top we can keep it a single ton if you want so in the on sort by name method we can simply go and say movie sorter dot sort movies by name here i can pass the list movies which i have and then i need to make sure that i call the adapter to indicate that the data has changed by simply saying adapter dot notify data sets changed over here now at this point if i go and run the app let's take a look at whether the sorting happens or not so now let's go to the second tab in lollipop device you can see there's 50 shades of gray there's kingsman and these are not sorted alphabetically but if we take our floating action button say a to z bam take a look at that everything is sorted alphabetically right now there's a most violent year american sniper annie big hero birdman black and white 50 shades of gray and so on so that means our sorting by name technique is working going back to the main activity let's try to work with the other sorters as well We'll simply go at the top here and we have the statement common everywhere the adapter dot instantiate item the next thing that we need to do is take this if condition place it right outside then you're going to have these if statements inside the outside one in other words we first check if the fragment is an instance of sort listener if the tag is sort name we simply call on sort name method everywhere or on the right fragment or we call on sort by date here or we call on sort by rating here so that simplifies a lot of things let's go back and write the code for sorting by date as well coming back to the movie sorter class we have a method sort movies by date which is very similar to the one that we just saw inside the compare method all we have to do now is say return and we are going to take the lhs movie object get its date which is the release date in the form of a date object and simply say compare to rhs dot get release date theater that's all you need to do so now you go back to your fragment box office and inside the on sort by date method you simply call the movie sorter to sort the movies by date and notify the adapter when the data set changes let's see if the date sort works perfectly so by default you can see there's 50 shades of gray and stuff you go to the second one and it's sorted by date there you go everything is completely changed the topmost movie is the one that was released on 30 jan 2015 as you go further down you will notice older dates 2014 coming up and you'll go even further down you will see more dates pop up in front of you so this is pretty good because we want to show the user the latest movies that have come out with the help of the date sorting mechanism that we have implemented last but not the least is the sort by ratings so this is how the method sort movies by rating is going to look
Now inside the compare method is where our logic is going to work this time. So we first need to get the rating for the movie where we can say int rating LHS and we can simply say LHS movie dot get audience score. Same way we can have rating RHS as well where we can say RHS dot get audience score. Now to compare both of them we are going to have to use if else statements here. So we are going to say if rating on the LHS side is less than the rating on the RHS side we want to return a negative one just like the documentation of the comparator. Otherwise if the rating on the LHS side is more than the rating on the RHS side we want to return a positive one as per the documentation otherwise we want to return a zero in over here. When we run sort by ratings, what do you think we will see first? The five star ones or the one star ones? Let's find out. We sort by rating here. And you notice that the shittiest movies come on top of the list. There's the two stars followed by the three and so on. And that's because we have followed ascending order sorting for the ratings that are available. We don't want to do this with our users. Rather, what we want to do is give them the descending order of sorting. And that is pretty simple. All you have to do is go back. To your movie sorter and reverse the order in other words where you have written minus one return a plus one and where you return plus one return a minus one it's that simple so simply go and run the app this time you will notice that the best movies come on the top and the worst movies come on the bottom so this is how you can twist the outcome of the comparator by simply interchanging what you're returning from it by default everything is going to happen in an ascending order if you want descending order simply reverse the numbers that you are returning from the comparator. So with this, we have covered a lot of things in this video and I would like to know your opinion on how would you do this. Do you think there are better ways? Why did that crash happen? And so many questions for which I am seeking answers from your end. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to SlideNerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.